welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon. Um, welcome back if you have been watching my Disney vlogs or if you've caught my Disney haul. Um, and welcome to my channel if you are new here. I recently got back from Orlando. Um, we got back a couple of months ago and we were actually out there to obviously see the parks and to run around like kids but mostly we went to get married um, and I vlogged the whole trip. Um, I'm still kind of doing those vlogs but the one of the most recent vlogs that went up was our wedding day vlog. And off the back of that, I had quite a few people contact me on Instagram. My name is at Shannon Lorraine, I'll put it here. <laughs> um, quite a few people contact me and ask kind of for some more information, um, kind of pricing, how you even go about getting married abroad, because it's very daunting. Um, and so I thought I would just film a video to kind of talk about and answer those questions. So I have been with my I guess, husband. That still sounds so weird. If you guys are married, does that ever stop sounding weird? Or <laughs> it sounds so grown up. But um, yes, we have been together for around nine and a half years now. We always kind of had an idea of what we wanted to do when the time came. So yeah, we got engaged in June 2018. Um, it was on the beach in Costa Rica. It was beautiful and we've always known that when we got married we wanted to get married on a beach specifically abroad um, as much as I love you know the Kent countryside for the wedding we kind of wanted something a bit more sunny <laughs> so with that it kind of obviously ruled out a lot of um, the general options that you might go for like you know the classic big white English wedding or a church wedding just knew we wanted something different. Also, the cost of English weddings seems insane. <laughs> we didn't actually go down the road of getting prices or anything like that because we just knew we we didn't need to, like it wasn't going to be something we were going to do, we don't want to waste anyone's time, but I think the average cost of a wedding is, it's either like £23,000 or £30,000, something like that, I don't know, it's a lot, it is so much money, which if you've got that money to spend on that day, amazing like that is so cool but we just didn't <laughs> we didn't have that kind of money to spend on one day we were looking at weddings in I think we looked at Dominican Republic and like Jamaica Mexico places like that um you know with the beautiful beaches and things like that but with those um there seems to be a lot of rules where you have to have been there for a certain amount of time before getting married there so I don't know, I think some of the countries like you have to be there for like four weeks <laughs> before getting married there. Um, some of them are probably a lot more lenient, like I said, you'd have to check it out. But yeah, there's weird rules like that. Um, my friend Abby told me she got married in Mexico and there was something where they had to do like a, I don't know, some kind of test, like swabs. <laughs> and both the people in the relationship had to do these tests. And then a couple of days before the ceremony, they both got given the tests back, like the other person's tests, and it was basically like, I don't know if it was like an STI test or what, but it was like to check that, you know, this person has this stuff or doesn't have this stuff, whatever, but like, are you sure you want to marry them given given the facts? I don't know, it seems a bit weird, but you'll have to check it out, I don't really know. Things change all the time. And a third thing that kind of put us off that kind of wedding as well was that it seemed that you couldn't really seem to get um, an English speaking um, like officiant which I guess makes sense because you know they don't speak English as a main language in those countries um, but you'd have to then get a translator so that came with an extra fee translators were expensive they were like thousand fifteen hundred pounds just for them so that was um, something that we kind of thought oh that's not I don't really know if I imagine my wedding with a translator I don't know um, so yeah, we kind of were like, hmm, what should we do? And then one day, <laughs> we were in Blue Water, which is like our kind of local shopping centre, and um, we walked past the Virgin Holiday store, and there was a big old Mickey Mouse in the window, and I was like, should we go and speak to them? Should we see? Because, you know, they do wedding packages, they might have something interesting. <laughs> and Ollie was like, is it because you've seen the Mickey Mouse? I was like, no. <laughs> But um, yeah, so kind of a backstory to that is that I went to Disney World when I was 12 years old. Um, that's the only time I've been and um, 
I just loved it. <laughs> I remember it being just, it was around a really awful time in my life and I remember it just being the biggest escape and like just happiness and just the best bubble to be in and I've wanted us to go back for as long as I've known Ollie. Well, he hadn't been to Disney World. Um, he'd been to Disneyland Paris when he was little but I think they're kind of very different experiences. Sorry, I'm to keep drinking my tea. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're very different experiences and he um, is the biggest kid. <laughs> like if we've ever been to kind of Corfu or something like that and we go to a water park, he's in his element. So I kind of just knew he would love it. But um, we've always kind of been very sensible with money. We've always been saving for something like it was kind of our house and then whatever else. There's always things to be saving for. Disney World isn't a cheap holiday. So every year I've kind of been like, should we go to Disney? No, but it just wasn't the time. And we just always had other things to spend our money on. So I was like, but we could get married in Florida and then combine the holiday. We kind of got that idea in our head. And obviously they are English speaking and that would cut out the need for a translator. Um, their rules about getting married are so much more lenient. Like, you know, they do Vegas weddings, for God's sake, you know, like drive through weddings. So we kind of knew that that wasn't gonna be so much of a problem. Um, so yeah, we went in and we spoke to a um, travel agent and she kind of got us an idea of pricing. So when we first went in, she was um, offering us kind of their wedding packages. So um, there's certain kind of beaches that have hotels on that do wedding packages um so originally she priced us up i think it was to do four nights at clearwater which is a beach in florida and then 10 nights in kind of a disney hotel and that was coming out quite expensive and i liked the idea like the beach looked beautiful and the hotel looked really really nice and i thought it'd be kind of cool to do that and to see some of Florida that isn't just kind of the parks but it just the more kind of when we first went and got the quote we were really excited and we were like oh my god yes this sounds amazing like we think we've kind of cracked it but then over kind of a couple of weeks from that we were just like letting it sinking and thinking about it and we just didn't really want to break up the holiday that much um like it was quite a drive from Clearwater to the park. So we would have to have a car and then we'd have to deal with parking it. And I don't know. And it meant that we were spending four days at a beach, which I mean, there's definitely holidays for that. But just for this holiday, I was like, I think we're going to need most of our time in the parks because there's so much to do. And I just didn't want didn't to waste it. And also some of our guests were coming for just one week. So it just really didn't work out that way. So then I don't, I really don't know how the thought came into my head or what it was, but when we went 12 years ago, when I went with my family 12 years ago, we spent a day at Discovery Cove. And from that holiday, that day has always been one we've spoken about with like the highest regards. <laughs> we've always just thought it was kind of literal paradise and spoken about it and like, you know I've told Ollie about it time and time again like how magical it was kind of swimming with the dolphins I've never done that before and just it was just like no other place so I was like I wonder if they do weddings and I went on their website and their website is pretty vague it's got like a celebration page and it kind of says like if it's someone's birthday they can do a package or like this that the other and then at the bottom it does say about weddings but there's no pictures no no information. So I contacted them on the email address that was there. And I think I had a look on my emails. I contacted them on the 14th of September, 2018. So that was kind of when we set the ball in motion for our Discovery Cove wedding. So they got back to me a couple of days later with their price list and it was their 2018 price list. So they said they hadn't yet kind of obviously sorted out their 2019 or 2020 price list. So this was to give an idea of what the prices were, but that could change. I was actually really pleasantly surprised at the pricing. Um, so the price was on the sheet that they sent us at the time. Obviously, if you're looking to book now, contact them because it really could change. Like this was 2018. Um, so the price was $2,999, so $3,000 plus 6.5% sales tax. So. I thought that was a really good price for a wedding package and that package included, I've got a screenshot here, yeah 
maybe I could have been a little bit more organised, not sure, but it's here anyway. So that package, it said the um, price covered up to 32 guests. So we had eight guests, so we were cool, we were fine. Um, and yeah, it means you get an exclusive wedding, which was something that we definitely wanted. Um, with a lot of the kind of places that we looked at, kind of if it was a part of an all-inclusive hotel or something like that, it seemed that they would have kind of multiple weddings a day, which is fine, like that's absolutely great. But for us, because we knew we were gonna be a small party, we wanted to be somewhere that we could be all day and be treated like royalty all day, you know, like it's your wedding day. I didn't wanna just feel like I was like just part of a conveyor belt or something like that. But I guess if you were gonna be doing that, you'd probably be going on and doing something else and then you would still feel super special, I'm sure. But just for our personal, what we wanted, um, we wanted it to be kind of an exclusive venue. So that was really great. Um, we also got a cabana included, which is like a little, um, shack hut kind of thing at Discovery Cove and you can pay if you go as a day guest you can pay to have a cabana I'm not entirely sure on the pricing but I think they're quite expensive but inside you get kind of lounges hammocks you get um, like a fridge that's kind of fully stocked with soft drinks in the morning and then they put alcohol in, in the um, afternoon get a safe and it's just nice to have a base you can go and that it's yours and again you feel more special and it's just really cool you also have kind of um, like a server come and like see if you need any more towels or drinks or whatever so that's really cool um we got given some champagne flutes <laughs> which had discovery cove on we had um a bottle of champagne which was given to us at our champagne toast um a personalized photo experience so we had a photographer wedding photo cd um printed photos um, Discovery Co photo album and our dolphin swim photos as well which um, if you do a dolphin swim as part of the day um, and you're not getting married it's super expensive for the photos it's so much money I think it's like more than the dolphin swim so I would definitely um, I was I was so happy that that was included because obviously we were going to want the photos so that saved us a lot of money there um, so it included that it didn't include one thing that it doesn't include is the cost of entry so it's a bit strange but because discovery cove is technically like a park um it i think they let in like a thousand people a day or something like that they have a set amount of people that they let in a day um but to have people at your wedding you have to pay for their park entry because you're there all day so whilst the wedding was three thousand dollars we then had to pay for everyone's ticket and we knew we wanted to do the dolphin swim, so we paid for the dolphin swim ticket, which, um, let me see if I've got the pricing. <laughs> the dolphin swim ticket. We got a really good price. We booked the dolphin swim tickets through Florida Ticks, um, and we booked those ages and ages before. So I think we paid £155 per person for the um, Discovery Cove entry and Dolphin Swim. We then did also later on decide to upgrade and add the Shark Swim ticket for some of us, because um, some of us wanted to do it, um, but we we didn't pay for the guests for that if they wanted to do it. They paid for that themselves just because it was an additional extra. Um, it came later on in the thing and they were, they were happy to do it. They, they were kind of the ones that initiated it, so yeah. For the entrance and dolphin swim is $155. I think just entrance is around $99. But again, this was when I booked it and things change. And I think it was um, quite a bit more pricey through the Discovery Cove website. So we decided to book through Florida Ticks. I think we booked it in the Boxing Day sales or something like that. Like we got a really good deal. So definitely have a shop around. You don't have to book your um, guest entrance through Discovery Cove. So um definitely have a look and google discount codes i am a discount code queen <laughs> and also cashback sites have a look on cashback sites because they've been brilliant um when i was booking the wedding i pretty much used them for everything and we got a lot of money back so i definitely recommend that once we kind of provisionally booked the date with discovery cove we then had to book an officiant and that's the person who marries you um they recommended on their kind of um 
paperwork that they sent to us they recommended someone called Kevin Knox um, and I am also part of a couple of Facebook groups there's one called Florida Fairy Tale Brides um, Disney Weddings Disney Brides UK or something like that there's a few on Facebook I just had a look and happened to join them and yes I had heard of Kevin Knox from a few people and heard really good things so we had a little look on YouTube, um, had a look at his website and yeah, we kind of just really liked the look of him, the look of his style and he just seemed like a really friendly guy. So we reached out to him, um, he came back fairly quickly and his price was, sorry I've got my notepad, <laughs> his price was $250 and that was for him to marry us. Um, I think we had to pay a $50 deposit. I will say, Kevin Knox was brilliant. We did have a slight like hiccup, which I'm sure literally never happens. We were just very unlucky. Um, maybe because I planned it so in advance or I'm not really sure, but we paid the deposit when we first contacted him. 26th of January, 2019, we paid the deposit. <laughs> and then I kind of didn't hear from him. And I'd seen on the Facebook groups, loads of girls saying, oh, just had my Skype call with Kev Rev or Rev Kev, however they say it, um, or just heard from him, he's asking us this, 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 and I was like, oh, I've literally heard nothing since paying the deposit, um, except for like a receipt email. So in September, <laughs> I contacted and I was like, is there anything we need to do? Um, do we, you know, is there anything we need to answer, sort out, whatever? Um, and he came back saying, yeah, you just need to pay the deposit and then we can go ahead. And I was like, oh, we've paid the deposit. And I just think now, like, if I hadn't have contacted him in September, he probably wasn't going to turn up to our wedding <laughs> in February. So that obviously could have been a massive drama. It wasn't because I contacted him, but he just somehow hadn't logged down that we'd paid our deposit, which these things happen. So always chase up vendors and things if you've not heard from them after a while, because it's just not worth that risk. <laughs> So yeah, when we had him, he was incredible. I would definitely recommend him. Um, but yeah, that's just an example of kind of wedding planning in general. You just have to be a little bit on it and just check that everything's running smoothly to avoid kind of dramas on the day. I love this mug, but it holds a lot of tea and I'm gonna need a wee now. Um, I'm not sure when that stopped filming. <laughs> it just stopped filming. I don't know if it cuts off after 20 minutes or something. Um, uh, yeah, something that might put people off getting married at Discovery Cove is that it is a very early start. <laughs> so the ceremony is before the park opens. So like I said, you obviously don't get exclusive use of the park all day. You are the only bride kind of wedding party that day. Um, so other people will start to turn up when the park opens. So they have the ceremony before the park opens to obviously make sure there's not loads of people watching and you know, just they just have it before the park opens. So that means our wedding was at around, I think it was like quarter past seven, half seven. Um, I got there for seven in the morning. I think we got picked up from our hotel at 6.30. I was up from like four, so it was a very, very early start, but we were jet lagged, so it was perfect. <laughs> we landed in Florida at, in the evening on Saturday, and then obviously we had Sunday, and then we got married on Monday, so there really wasn't time for us to get into the kind of sleep pattern <laughs> that we were going to get into, so the early morning was absolutely fine. Um, the thing is with early mornings, I guess for some people might be a problem is A, if you're going to get your hair and makeup done, if you've got a big bridal party, kind of trying to fit in everyone getting their hair and makeup done in time, you might have to start really early for that or you might have to get multiple people out to be doing hair and makeup for your group. Um, I was very lucky that I had um, one of our guests, Luna, she was my hair and makeup lady. Um, in the end I actually decided to do my own makeup just because kind of timing wise we kind of were running out of time and it just meant we would have had to get up earlier for her to be able to do both and my sisters so in the end she just did our hair, I did my own makeup, my sister did her own makeup and that worked perfectly for us but I think there are a couple of um, makeup companies, hair makeup companies I contacted before I knew Lorna was coming and just for pricing um, and they were called Butte Special and 
Faces by Shannon, I think, were two I, were rec I was recommended the most. Um, I can't remember if I got pricing from Faces by Shannon. I don't think I did. Um, but the Beauty Special, or Special, how do you say it? It's got an E on the end, okay? Um, their pricing seemed really decent. They did have an early call-out charge, um, which I can't remember what it was, but if you contact them, I'm sure they'll send you their price list. Um, but the one thing I will say is you... I really... Looking back, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're planning a wedding, it's so like daunting and overwhelming at times. And I really wasn't sure what to do about hair and makeup before I knew Lorna was coming because obviously Discovery Cove is a water kind of park. You know, you're, we're gonna go for the ceremony, have the ceremony, have the photos, and then you're gonna get in your bikini and your wetsuit, and then you're gonna go snorkeling or swimming with dolphins or, you know, so your hair and makeup isn't really gonna stay in place. So that's something that's a little bit tricky to kind of get your head around if you are paying for a hair and makeup person because you know it, it's really annoying to do that and then it only be there for a couple of hours so that kind of um solidified in my mind as well I think even if Lorna didn't come I would have definitely done my own makeup I'm not sure about hair I don't know if me and my sister would have done each other's or how it would have worked but I think personally for me it didn't really seem worth it but Obviously, everyone's different. Um, I know that I enjoy doing makeup anyway. I'm kind of okay at it. So I kind of trusted my own skills in that sense. But it's entirely up to you and obviously worth looking into. Um, with Discovery Cove, the photos are included. It is scary. In general, booking with Discovery Cove was scary because there's very little information online. Like, I would have loved to watch a video like this um, with just a bit more information because there's literally nothing at all. There's a couple of videos on YouTube of the ceremonies, but they're like 10 years old or they're so old and you don't really get any information except for the ceremony. Um, and their website's pretty vague. Um, their correspondence is good, but you don't um, get to choose your photographer or anything like that like obviously when you plan a wedding generally you know that's a big part of it is finding a photographer finding a style you like um meeting with them looking at their kind of portfolio and stuff with discovery cove it's like you'll get a park photographer and you're like but what <laughs> you know if the photo's awful that's really upsetting like we you know it, it was a big risk and we were so lucky. I don't know if they're all as amazing as our photographers were, but we were so lucky. We had um, two ladies. Um, I think Jackie was our photographer and she was really, really good. And then we had Veronica. I'm so sorry if I've forgotten your names. I'm so sure that's your names. Um, and she was kind of helping. Um, she was just always giving us water. And she also took this camera for me and filmed loads of little shots. So if you've seen our wedding video that I put together, then all of the kind of Discovery Co shots that were us having our photos taken and stuff, she filmed on my camera for me. So I was so grateful. They were just so incredible. And the photos are stunning. Like, we were so, so lucky. We... I just love them, I'm just obsessed. Like, I look at the photos, I'm like, I can't believe they're ours, I can't believe that's us. Um, I just feel so lucky to have those. So, for that to be included in the package and the price is incredible. We got all of the photos on a disc, um, and they also printed off, I think, 15 for us as well. So we had those on the day to kind of look at. Um, we chose what ones we wanted. So that was amazing. Um, and what else, what else, what else? So yeah. Basically, if I talk through the day, oh, actually, I'll start with something else. We weren't really sure what to do in terms of getting from our hotel to Discovery Cove. Uh, we decided in the end to go with a company called Mears Transport. I have seen loads of vloggers use them for like airport transport and um, on the Florida group as well, loads of people recommend them. I would not recommend, absolutely not. <laughs> we booked them, I booked them a couple of months in advance online, paid it all up front. Um, I put all over the booking, so I booked three cars. I booked two for the morning, one for the girls, one for the boys, and then one for the way back, like a bigger kind of minivan for all of us to come back together. So in the morning, obviously, half six in the morning, whatever, six in the morning, getting picked up, um, we came out first, we booked the girls' car first, and we came out and there were two cars there um, in the kind of lobby outside our hotel, not in the lobby, outside. <laughs> 
parked outside our hotel and yeah we kind of said oh Shannon and they were like yeah so we got in one um and I just gathered that the other car had turned up early for the boys and they were just wait he was just waiting for when the boys came out so we drove off started going and then we were kind of 10 minutes into our journey so like nearly at Discovery Cove and um, my sister had a call from my brother saying, our car's not here. You you said it was here, didn't you? And my sister was like, um, yeah, it was parked behind us. And it turns out that that car had just left. He just, he left at the same time as us. He thought that I'd double booked a car and apparently hearing back, um, you know, after me chasing and chasing and chasing, like a few days later, he apparently heard us say, oh, that's everyone as we were getting in. But we meant it was everyone as in it was all the girls like we were saying that to our driver not to the car who hadn't even approached us like if he'd come up and spoken to us we would have explained and it would have been fine but I don't know it was a nightmare so he'd driven off um so the boys were like just waiting outside the hotel like we don't know what to do is he coming back what's going on and luckily like I don't even know how this happened but a yellow taxi just appeared <laughs> and he was dropping someone off or whatever, which at that time in the morning is so random that he would be there. So he luckily took the boys, they got in, they were told me had to sit on Ollie's lap, which I don't know if that's allowed, I'm not sure, but he saved the day, that yellow cab driver, so thank you to him. Um, they ended up getting there, they were late. Um, so yeah, I really was really unhappy with Mears because we were trying to talk to our taxi driver saying, look, can you call the other guy and find out where he's gone? And he was like, oh, I don't have his number. So which fine. So then we were like, can you call your like office and find out? And he called a number and it ended up just being the booking number that we would have called. Like he didn't seem to have a special number. So he was on hold for ages. Like it was just a nightmare that you do not want on the way to your wedding. Like I was sitting in the car like, <laughs> what's going to happen? Because <laughs> as well, we knew there was a really tight time limit with Discovery Cove opening. And then we couldn't have got married on the beach because everyone goes on that beach later on in the day, you know. It was just stress we didn't need. So I would not recommend Mears. Um, I had to really chase for a refund and they refunded me for the one car we didn't get. But to be honest, for the stress and things, I think they should have been a bit more apologetic and... I just, I really wasn't happy. Um, the car picking us up did turn up. He was there on time. You know, that was all good. But just for your wedding day, it's not, not recommended. <laughs> Maybe I just got really unlucky. Um, the price was kind of fine. It was good. But yeah, it was, it was stress. And that's not what you need. Discovery Cove, I got there. I arrived with my sister and Lorna. Um, and we were taken to a little room, um, which I guess is like their conference room or something, kind of out the back um, by their offices and stuff. Um, I turned up in my dress. Some people turn up and choose to get ready there, kind of do their hair and makeup and stuff, but I just wanted to be ready at the hotel and arrive ready. I didn't, I wanted to have all of my stuff, you know, I don't want to risk forgetting makeup. There's already so much to remember to take to that day because you need your wedding stuff, you need your flowers, your rings, your this, that, you need your snorkel, you need your bikini, you need a change of clothes for later. Like, there's a lot to remember. So, um, yeah, I, we just decided to get ready at the hotel beforehand. So we were there and kind of just put my perfume on and like just was kind of getting myself together. It was really a weird time. Like I felt nervous, but not like nerves as in, oh, what if he doesn't turn up? But just nerves as in, what the hell? Like this has been so long, you know, we've been together for so long and it's finally here, today is the day. And the advice that I was given the most, and it's the advice that I would pass on as well, is to just be in the moment, to try not to worry about everyone else, to just take a minute every now and again with you and your husband to just look around, look at everyone having a good time, just look at each other and be like, oh my gosh, we've done it, like this is our day, how incredible, like just to remember how you felt in that moment because it goes so quickly and I know that's said all the time but it goes so, so quickly and oh, I would relive it again and again, it was the best day ever. So yeah, we got to Discovery Cove and I was waiting in that room, the boys turned up, um, Ollie went to the, like, 
where we had the ceremony. Um, he was waiting there. Um, Andrew and my brother came, so my, Andrew's my brother-in-law, Chris is my brother. They both came out the back and kind of met with me because they were both walking me down the aisle. Um, my nephews went with Ollie, they, and then Lorna went out to join them as well. So yeah, there was us in the room, my sister, me, Chris and Andrew, and we were kind of just chatting or whatever and then Rev Kev came in, introduced himself, it's obviously my first time meeting him in person and he was so lovely and he just calmed my nerves like like that, like straight away. Um, he kind of said, right, so how are you going to walk down the aisle? He like said how the best way to do it is. He kind of said like, right, when you get to the end of the aisle, you're going to do this, or, like, you're going to give your flowers, but he just kind of, he just obviously does it all the time and he knows exactly what he's doing. Whereas I was just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> I was like, my head was somewhere else. I don't know. It was mad. It was just the weirdest feeling, but the best feeling. Um, so yeah, then I walked down the aisle. It's not like, because where you get, where you meet at the beginning is this like conference room. You have to kind of go around the back alley of it. So you go through like just the back parts of Discovery Cove. Um, and yeah, and then the kind of aisle begins. So I walk down the aisle to, it's called Main Titles um, from The Little Mermaid. And it's a beautiful piece of music. It like makes me well up. And if you want to hear it, it is on our wedding video. Um, I got like a copyright claim for it. And so there is an ad in there, I think, because that's what YouTube does when you use some music. But luckily I didn't like, you know, get told off properly. <laughs> I don't know, very confusing this YouTube malarkey. Um, but yeah, beautiful piece of music. I walked down to um, my brother and brother-in-law both walked me down and my sister walked down ahead of me. So then, yeah, we had the ceremony. It went in a flash. It was amazing. Um, there's, again, there's little things that kind of went wrong, but like not at all really. It's not a big deal. Um, such as we had bought kind of a big um, shell for the rings to sit in. Like I wanted them to be on like a little bit of sand and just like cute for like a photo and just whatever. Ollie had brought the shell because <laughs> um, he was obviously with the boys. He'd brought it but he forgot to give it to them. It was just in his jacket pocket. So then when Rev Kev said to Toby, my nephew, like, oh, who's got the rings? He brought them over and he just had the boxes. And I was like, where's the shell? Ollie was like, oh, I've got it. And he started going in his pocket. And I was like, no, like we're literally getting married. <laughs> like, stop it. It's too late now. It's fine. Um, so yeah, we have that. And then um, my nephew Max did a speech for us. He did a poem. It's called The Giraffe and the Monkey, I think. It's beautiful. It's very, very sweet. Perfect for a child to do a reading to. Um, and it just fitted us so well. So really beautiful reading. But Ollie and I had forgotten. I'll say Ollie and I. I mean, it probably falls on me because I'm the one that kind of did all this kind of stuff. I forgot to type it up and print it out and laminate it, whatever I was going to do. I just forgot. I hadn't done it. So the night before we were talking through it and I was like, oh my God, Max hasn't got his reading. So Ollie literally got a back of a bit of paper, like a random envelope or something that was in our hotel and just wrote it all out. Like, so Max was reading it and it just was scrappy, but whatever. It was the cutest thing. Like he did such a great job at doing the reading. So yeah, there was that that kind of went wrong, but again, like not a problem. The main thing that I think was like, oh my God, is this really happening? Was during the ceremony, um, we were doing our vows or whatever and Ollie put my ring on and I, I've heard about women having like panics and having to put their hands in bowls of cold water and stuff before the wedding because like before the ceremony in case their fingers swell up and their, their ring doesn't get on like and that had worried me it crossed my mind like oh that could happen but like I knew my ring was fine so that all went on that was all good and then it came to Ollie's and I had it and I started putting it on his finger and it like wouldn't go on like it would not go on past his knuckle and I was looking at him and I was like Ollie your ring's not going on like everyone's there, the rev was there, and I was like, Ollie, your ring's not going on, and like, and oh my god, I just had to keep, like, it's, it was so long, it felt like hours of me trying to get this ring on his finger, like, it will go on, <laughs> there's pictures of me literally, like, shoving it on, all these, <laughs> as well, 
well. I forgot to say, like, Ollie was so emotional. <laughs> like, when I walked down the, when I was walking down the aisle, his eyes were all, like, <laughs> teary. Oh, he was so cute. It was so sweet. But <laughs> his nose kept running. <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying this. His nose kept running like one nostril. <laughs> One nostril just kept running because <laughs> so we had to have a tissue. And there's a photo where I'm like trying to shove the ring on like really hard. And he's just turned around and he's like blowing his nose. And it's just like the most like unromantic scene ever. I'm like, you will but take this ring. And he's like, I've got some pokies. <laughs> it's just so funny. But again, like it went wrong, but it's. Uh, I'm so glad we have that story to tell and it got on in the end. It's not coming off, <laughs> but it got on in the end. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if he sw swelled up on the plane or if he put on a bit of weight or I don't know, but it did fit him and now it's, it fit him in the end. He got it on, but yeah, weird. And it was just the best. We, <sighs> we walked out to um, We Belong Together from Toy Story. So if you want to know what that sounds like, or if you don't know already, just look it up on YouTube. It's a funny song. It's proper like, it felt like the credits were rolling kind of thing as we were walking back down and then Ollie started dancing. So we, there's a cute photo of us like dancing down the aisle. So that's really nice. So we had that and then they played us a third song, which was a cover of You'll Be In My Heart, which my sister sang, um, which I actually put over the ceremony on the YouTube video I did. So again, if you want to hear that, go and check it out. Um, but yeah, they played that during our um, document signing and cake cutting kind of champagne toast time. So after the ceremony, you then walk to another little bit. It's like literally over the way. Um, and they've set up like a beautiful table and stuff. I'll put in some photos over here <laughs> of that setup because it was beautiful. They did a really great job. Again, you just don't know. Like when you're... Um, contacting them they kind of asked for your color scheme and i said like i'm having sunflowers and my sister's dress is navy so kind of navy and yellow um and they were like perfect and that was it that was all they needed to know so i was really nervous um i'd also seen photos of they put out kind of like some rose petals along the aisle and also some roses on the table where I think the champagne is. Um, and they were red roses in the photos and I was like, mm, it just doesn't really go with my vibe. <laughs> so I contacted them and I said, is there any way to have a different color like white or yellow or maybe even to not have them? Like I would rather not have them than have red, which I don't know, maybe that sounds fussy, but that was kind of how I felt. So they had yellow petals and it was perfect. Um, they just, they just were so helpful. Like, I feel like if you're getting married in the UK, you get so hung up on the small details, like your cake, your flowers, your seating plan seems to be a massive thing for everyone. Um, we just didn't have that stress. Like, it was, the venue spoke for itself, you know, it's such a beautiful, beautiful venue. Like, we got married literally on a beach with a big waterfall behind us and it was just incredible. Like, I felt like we didn't need to worry so much about those small things, but in actual fact, they did a really good job of the decorations. Uh, another part of getting married abroad is obviously the paperwork. Um, now, I think you can do it if you have like, just a blessing or something, and you kind of get married in the country, in your home country before. Like, I think we maybe could have done that, but we wanted to actually get married abroad. So there are websites that you can find where they basically like, do it for you but I don't know what they really do for you that's any different to what you can do for yourself and they add a hefty fee <laughs> so I decided to do it um, myself <laughs> to save that money if you oh another thing that yeah if you are in Orlando for a few days before the wedding I think you can go to the um, county hall and like both of you go and you can get your document then and there and that saves you quite a bit of money and it's you know you've got it then it's easy peasy but we didn't have that chance because we flew in on a Saturday got married on the Monday it wasn't open on the Sunday there wasn't the time but I definitely look into that if you are going with kind of a few days ahead um obviously make sure there's no bank holidays and things that could stop you getting it because it's really important that you need it to get married um but yeah so what we did is I contacted I'm probably gonna say it wrong but it was called Brevard County Court or Brevard, um, their website is very basic, um, old fashioned, but it's basically a county court in the area 
and you contact them, you fill out a form and then you, they have all your information and then 60 days before your wedding date they send you the paperwork. Um, they, I think they sent it by email, they sent it by email. So then with that paperwork, what we had to do was we had to find a solicitor or a notary and we had to take that paperwork and we had to go and meet with them and we had to kind of run through it with them, sign the documents, take ID um, and they stamp it with one of their official stamps. <laughs> um, and then with that, you then take those documents and you post them back to America found a solicitor and again this is something else I would definitely um, contact a few different people because the first person I contacted they literally our appointment was literally five minutes max like what they do is you go in with your paperwork they read through it they you sign it in front of them they sign it and they stamp it and that is it and the first person I contacted I think wanted 250 pounds for that and I was like sheesh like that is a lot of money <laughs> just for five minutes work like I'm in the wrong line of business um but yeah I contacted a few people and in the end we found someone who would do it for 90 pounds so definitely a massive saving so I would really really make sure you contact a few different people there was another confusion which literally stressed us out for like a whole day which it really really didn't need to with the Brevard um email they say to pay you have to pay them a fee for the license, like um, for the documents, whatever. Um, and it was $86. And they said to pay it by money order, um, check. It might have just been those two options. And we didn't know what money order was. <laughs> Turns out they're an old fashioned thing, I think. Like we went to um, like a currency shop, we went to the post office, we went to the bank. None of them could tell us what that was. <laughs> so. We couldn't do that. Um, we couldn't send a cheque because our chequebook is in pounds and they'd ask for it in dollars, so we couldn't do that. Um, so in the end, I was like, what are we actually going to do? How are we going to get this $86 to these people? Um, so I sent them an email and I was like, is there a way we can just call and pay? And they were like, yeah, sure. We were like, oh my God, we've literally spent a day stressing about this, wondering how we're going to get this paid. Um, so they should have mentioned that on the email. Like That is kind of the easiest way. Being the money-saving expert that I am, I also, um, <laughs> this is so cheap, I downloaded Skype, um, and when you download Skype and set up, you can get like a free 30-day trial to phone the states, <laughs> like for free, so I downloaded that so then I could call them and pay for that free of charge, so that was, you know, another little tip for you there, um, I don't know how much it would have cost, I don't know how much money I saved, but... I wasn't going to pay for something I didn't have to. <laughs> so yes, I did that. Um, $86. Uh, we took the paperwork to the post office and posted it. I think it was like £8 to post it to America, like super cheap. Um, and yeah, it got to them and it was all sorted. They then did what they had to do to it and they provided that paperwork to Kev Rev. So when he turned up to the ceremony, he had that paperwork and we then signed it again um, for the wedding and then he took it away again and then after the ceremony I think I don't really know his process but we got home from America and it was there we got sent our wedding license and certificate and stuff so yeah it was super easy it just felt a bit daunting but when you know like obviously if you have any questions just ask me because it it is hard to get your head around, but when you know, you're like, oh, okay, it's actually not that stressful. And then we went and we had some group photos with us and my family and the guests. And then they went off for breakfast and we, Ollie and I carried on having photos for another kind of two hours, I'm sure. They were really, really beautiful photos though. I will put some over here. Um, but yeah, the, we they were just incredible. The girls were so lovely. We went, um, through this like special gated bit and there was like some rocks and we stood on those and then they got the dolphin trainers out and in the water and they got the dolphins to jump behind us for our photos so a lot of the photo time is literally you and like your partner like just kissing and they're just by this point they're so fake you're just literally like <laughs> or smiling and it's like <sighs> my smile's hurting now because you're waiting so long to get the right shots and stuff but 
yeah, with the dolphins, it's so cool. Like, we couldn't see what they were doing behind us, obviously. But then when you get the photos back, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. They're like literally jumping. We had one where there was like three dolphins and then oh, it's just so cool to have those photos. Again, I'll put them here. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just had so many. Like, we can't believe how many photos we got. So lucky and just... They're just so beautiful. There's so many different areas of Discovery Cove that are just, just so pretty, <laughs> so nice. Um, so yeah, we had our photos and then we went back to our cabana. Um, they'd brought breakfast to us. So our guests were able to go at Discovery Cove. It's kind of like a, um, is it like a buffet type? Like you queue up with your tray and you get your food. I'm not sure if they had to do that on the wedding morning or not, I'm not really sure, but we had food brought to us because they, it was a bit later than the breakfast time and they just kind of chose us a selection of stuff. So that was really cool. Um, we sat and we ate that while well, we're still in our wedding stuff at this point and we knew we had to quickly get changed into our wetsuits and stuff because we had our dolphin swim coming up. So they came in when we were eating our breakfast. At this point it was just me and Ollie and obviously that was the first time it'd been just us two so far for our wedding day. I'm not sure what time this was was at this point, maybe like 9.30, 10? I, I literally have no idea of the concept of time on that day. Um, but yeah, so we were eating breakfast and then someone popped their head in and was like, oh, in five minutes we've got a surprise for you, so just make sure you're in here then. We were like, okay. So we are just eating our breakfast and then like my family and kind of guests started coming back into the cabana. They'd obviously been told there was this surprise as well. And then they come with this big, like, box with like a blanket over it and I was like what is that and I said I think it could be a sloth and I had an inkling just because I'd read somewhere ages ago that on special occasions they are sometimes able to bring out a sloth I don't know it's like obviously a rescue situation it's not like horrible they just took the blanket off and the sloth was like hanging from the top of the cage and they got him out Oh, actually it was a her, it was her, she was called Mila, and they got her out and the lady was like holding her but we were able to stroke her and get some photos with her and she talked to us about her and explained kind of how she'd come to be at Discovery Cove and kind of the boys, like my nephews were able to ask questions, like it's so cool to be like there with a sloth, um, so yeah that was really special and then the sloth went away, I think they said that she's awake for like, I don't know if it's two hours a day or... I'm not sure, not very long, so we were really lucky to be able to have that experience. Um, and then, yeah, we got in our wetsuits. I asked Lorna to plait my hair because <laughs> I had my hair down and curly and I was like gonna get in the water. So I got her to French plait it so it still looked nice um, and didn't go all ratty and stuff. I kept my makeup on um, because my face wasn't going in the water with the dolphin swim. Um, and then later on when we did snorkeling, I had one of those snorkels that's like a full face snorkel, so it like protected my makeup, it was perfect. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you swam with the dolphins and that's incredible. Like, I could just literally talk about Discovery Cove all day and I think this video is already super long, so I won't talk about it for ages, but yeah, it was amazing. I'd done it once before, Ollie never had, my nephews hadn't. Um, so yeah, it was really special. My brother hadn't, I don't think, and he's done loads of stuff, so it's well cool that he was able to do that as well. Or was it the shark swim first? I might be talking out of my bum. I actually think it was the shark swim first. <laughs> um, so yeah, the adults did the shark swim, my two nephews didn't. Um, that was really cool. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, over the dolphin swim at all actually. Like it would definitely be as, as an extra or if you'd done the dolphin swim a few times and wanted to try something different. Um, we weren't lucky enough to actually kind of have sharks kind of come up to us too much but to be snorkeling in like the water when there's loads of sharks and some of the sharks look like proper sharks, you know, like scary sharks. They were little versions but they looked like Oh my god, like I had a little bit of a panic at one point when I was above the water listening to the kind of instructor guy and I put my face in and the shark was just there and I was like, <laughs> like I just got this like panic but then I was like, oh my god, he said to not panic. So yeah, it was really cool, definitely an experience and for your wedding day. Also, fun fact, Ollie's biggest fear is sharks. So the fact that I booked that, I don't know that he was that pleased with but I think he enjoyed it in the end. Um, after that, we had lunch. Um, they had like separated off a separate area for us and they'd put our cake there um, and our flowers and yeah, they'd put our color, kind of colour scheme on the table and made it really cute. Um, 
we did queue up to get what we wanted, but they then came and brought us anything else we wanted and they were just really good. It was, it was really lovely. Um, so yeah, we, that was kind of the first time we were all back together properly, like able to chat and stuff um, since the ceremony. And then after that, we had the dolphin swim. After the dolphin swim, which I've already spoken about because I got it muddled up, we then had some time to do some snorkeling and walk around. And But at lunch, Ollie and I were talking and we were saying how it's such a shame that we hadn't had a chance to experience Discovery Cove so much because we'd spent so long taking photos, which I don't regret that at all. Like The photos were incredible. Um, but I, I knew there was so much more to Discovery Cove that we wouldn't have the chance to do because they shut at five. I think we got picked up at four. Um, because of our evening plans, we didn't have enough time. Um, so yeah, we were just saying like, it's such a shame we haven't got to enjoy the park properly. And one of the lovely ladies overheard us saying that. And she came over then, half an hour later, whatever, and was like, so we've just spoken to our um, supervisor and we've actually got you and Ollie a day to come back, like free of charge, you can come back to Discovery Cove and experience the park you know and actually get to enjoy it without the stress of a wedding and we were like no way that that it was so generous and so unexpected and just just like honestly I can't rate the staff enough like they were just so helpful so lovely we felt so special all day and it just felt like there was just constant surprises and treats and we just felt like royalty and also just everyone in general, like when we were walking around the park having our photos taken, like obviously in our wedding clothes, people were like, oh my God, you look like a princess. <laughs> and like the staff, the other, um, other guests of the park, just everyone, it was just, I've never felt so special in my life, which I guess is how you want to feel on your wedding day. But the day went very quickly and then it was time for our evening plans. Oh, I will just quickly say as well, actually, I mentioned our cake. So Discovery Cove don't supply a cake for you. Um, but they did give us some advice on how to get one if we wanted one. We didn't really feel like we needed one so much because at Discovery Cove, it is all inclusive. So you get your breakfast and your lunch. And then throughout the day, you can go up to the kind of um, bar areas at any point And they've got like hot cookies, pretzels, crisps, slushies. Like they, in our cabana, there was snacks, like just a chest full of snacks that we could just obviously help ourselves to all day. So we didn't really feel like we were going to need cake <laughs> but for a photo it's nice to have a cake so what i did is in america their cakes in their supermarkets are just they're they're next level they look like wedding cakes so what i did was yeah there's a supermarket in america called publix i, I think it's a chain um and they on their website have cakes <laughs> and they're amazing like what I did there's a website called Instacart which seemed like Deliveroo but for supermarkets so the day before our wedding <laughs> I went on Instacart and I found the cake that we wanted and it was like $20 I think it was meant to be like $26 it had a deal on it um so there was free delivery I think it was $24.19 was what we paid for our wedding cake and it got delivered straight to the venue um, same day delivery, so I ordered it on the Sunday, it got delivered a couple of hours later to the venue. They obviously just kept it there for us the next day. Bought a cake topper from Amazon for a couple of quid, took that with us. It just was perfect for the price and the cake was delicious, it was so good. So yeah, like in England, again, for a wedding cake you'd spend hundreds, so it's things like that, like you'd really focus on a cake in if you're getting married over here and it'd be like a big deal breaker, whereas over there it was like, deliver a cake okay <laughs> like but it worked out and it was amazing oh so the evening i feel like that should be an, almost a separate video i've talked for so long <laughs> but soz um so for the evening what we did is we decided to watch the magic kingdom fireworks um we didn't want to do it in the parks because you're not allowed to wear your dress in the parks we hired a pontoon boat it's called um you can read about it on the disney website there's loads of videos on youtube um but it's literally a little boat. You can get different size ones. There's ones that are like yacht ones as well. But I th actually think for the fireworks, they're not as good because they've got a cover. Um, I don't know though. I think that was about $300, $371 including tax. Um, so yeah, we left Discovery Cove at four. We went straight, we got um, the Mears transfer straight back to our hotel. 
had a quick shower, got re-ready for the evening. I did my own hair that evening, um, makeup and stuff. And then we got Ubers from our hotel to the Grand Floridian because that's where we'd chosen to get our boat from. And now we'd also decided to get a photographer because I'd seen some photos where people were on the boat and they've got the fireworks behind them and it just looked incredible. And I was like, I need, I need to have those photos. So that was, I think, the priciest thing we kind of splashed out on was our photographer for the evening. Um, but considering we didn't pay separately for a photographer in the day, it kind of, we didn't mind so much. I spent ages trying to find a photographer. And in the end, I settled with um, a lady called Elle. Her company is called Captured by Elle. I found her on Instagram. Beautiful, beautiful photos. The photos we had for the evening were obviously very different to her normal style because her normal style is super light and airy and beautiful and obviously ours were in the dark so they were gonna look different but we were so happy with them um so yeah we had her for two hours i think she was 450 dollars for the two hours um but that does include obviously she edited the photos and got them back to us and we got loads of photos so i think she's worth it but just to bear in mind there were cheaper ones but i like cheaper photographers i did come across but their style was nowhere near as professional looking as hers they didn't seem to edit them you just get back like some photos that you could have taken yourself so yeah we met with her at the um marina we met with our boat driver which i think he was called norm he was he was lovely <laughs> and you go on a little tour so we all get on the boat on the boat there's like free snacks and drinks just like soft drinks you can upgrade to have alcoholic drinks and stuff we didn't we didn't really feel the need to um so yeah you go on like a tour around the seven seas lagoon i think it's called um and you see kind of there's like abandoned islands and stuff that used to be like water parks and things like that. It's really cool, like for a Disney geek, it's so cool to hear kind of history behind it. You go around and do that for a while and then you kind of park up and get ready for the, the fireworks, the happily ever after fireworks. We went back to the Grand Floridian. We had still had like kind of 10, 20 minutes left with Elle. So we went into the lobby of Grand Floridian and had photos there. After that, we then got Ubers back to our hotel and my sister took my nephews to bed because by, by this point it's like fairly late and obviously we've been up since like 4am um, and the rest of us went to the hotel bar which is called like Scat Cat Lounge or something like that and I'm in my wedding dress oh, for god's sake it's cut off again I'm talking too much but now it's different again so I'm so sorry but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so she was like, I hear there's a wedding over here. Um, and I heard you want to try beignets. And at this point, we were obviously only been there for a couple of days. So we hadn't tried beignets yet. And she came out and she gave us every flavour of beignet. <laughs> so we just had a table covered in beignets, which if you don't know, they're like basically like warm donuts, but like Mickey shaped. And they're so good. And they had all different toppings on. And they were really good. So yeah, we got those for free. We got the cocktails for free. We just were treated so incredibly well. And then we probably went to bed by half 11 or 12 um, because it had been such a long day. And then we had to get up early the next day. I think we met at like eight or something for Animal Kingdom. So yeah, it was full on, but it was the best ever. I think it's really affordable pricing. Obviously that might have changed. So definitely get in touch. I'll try and find the link to their website and put that in the description below. Um, I will also link Captured by Elle's website, I'll link Kevin Knox's website, I will link Brevard County, um, who else did we use? I won't link our solicitor because you can just find your local solicitor. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was just, it just worked so well. It just came together perfectly and um, I would 100%, 1000 million percent recommend getting married at Discovery Cove. They were incredible, they make you feel so special. Yeah, I'll leave it there. I can obviously do another video if you want me to answer any other questions, um, if you want me to answer any questions about planning our Disney trip in general, our flights, our hotels, our bookings, etc. Um, ask me any questions because I'm more than happy to answer them and obviously, you know, in lockdown at the minute so I've got time on my hands. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy this video and if you did manage to watch to the end, Thank you and I hope I've been somewhat helpful. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel that would be amazing. Thank you for watching um, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye!